This short video will show you how to use the Google Reader within the iGoogle interface, which is exactly where we are at right now. So I wanted to give you a view of kind of the end in mind. This is my Google Reader, which is my home page, and I set it as my home page so that I am reminded to occasionally check and see if there are new feeds in on my reader, which is what you see right here in the lower left-hand corner. Now, first of all, you can choose a theme for your iGoogle platform, and I've chosen the one that rotates the theme so that every day I will get a, another one. And that's good because this uh, black and white version that I'm looking at right now is a bit um, uninspiring and actually makes some of the, uh, the uh, links here difficult to locate. But I'm going to click on one right here, which is what you click on to add the new functionality. And that's called Add Stuff. That's what Google's calling it. And this is where you can add all kinds of games and things that you can waste a lot of time with. Or you can add things like Google Maps search or your Gmail and so forth. And so that's what I use to set up really a very simple format here, which has ESPN.com. So instead of taking the time to go there, I get at a glance what the current news is. I have my blog here in the upper right hand corner. I have my Google Calendar, which I use for specific purposes. Dictionary.com, which is a nice reference tool. And then, of course, the Google Reader. Before I get to how it works here, and we'll come back to that, I want to show you what the reader actually works with if you do not use the iGoogle platform. You can see that there's a lot of um, stuff here to uh, deal with. It can be very unwieldy if you have uh, quite a few blogs that you subscribe to, which I subscribe to 20 of them. And the way you read these blogs is by clicking through uh, the list down here, and then it brings up the most current news in the big screen here. That's difficult to work with, and that's why I like to use the iGoogle platform, which you can see is much neater and cleaner, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But before we leave this page, I want to show you this Add Subscription button here. If a blog, or I guess more accurately, a website does not have an RSS feed, which is how you typically subscribe, and I'll show you in a second, you can use this Add Subscription button to create a feed that goes to your Google Reader for any website. And this is how I've actually subscribed to my local newspaper because I don't want to get the print version and I don't want to read it probably every day, but once in a while I just want to see what's going on. They don't happen to have an RSS feed set up, so I've created my own. So let's look at how to actually create the RSS feed to your reader by first going to my blog here, which is the one that I make a post to every day. So if somebody wants to get those daily posts for my blog or any other, they simply go up and click on this orange chiclet, which is going to be in the browser window. When you click on that, it will either take you straight to the reader or give you a choice. I always take the top one because to my knowledge, they're pretty much the same. And then you can choose to add it to your home page or add it to Google Reader. And when you do that, it's going to take me straight to the Google Reader. And it's not showing any feeds at this point because I've cleared them through. But I believe if we refresh, you should see, or let's try down here, view all items. I think that's going to show me that, yes, I've, I'm making a post virtually every day on this particular blog. Now, going back to iGoogle here, Here's how it actually works and how I manage my subscriptions. They all come in and like I noted that I subscribe to these 20 blogs. But as the news comes through, I can scroll through and see if it's anything that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm not a stats person and I don't use Google Chrome, so that one's not interesting. Uh, I keep scrolling. Um, I've been keeping up on the uh, Apple's tablet, so maybe I want to click on that and take a look. And so it's going to open up a new window. If I find it interesting, I can read on. If I don't, then I can quickly close out of it and uh, move on to the next one. And so they're all nicely, neatly laid out in here. But here's the best part of this, I believe, is when I'm done, I make one click and one click only. It clears the page. I have no more to information to, to read there, which is a great feature. And, and a great way to use the Google Reader as opposed to subscribing via email. So that is my recommendation, is to stay current with your news by using Google Reader, but to make it easy to work with, use it within the iGoogle interface.